morning, everybody. I hope you're doing well. I'm leaving Montana today. Spent some time yesterday removing all of the old sticker adhesive from the side of these slides. Got my goo off up there and uh, got it all looking nice and shiny once, once again. So feeling good about that. And in case you can't tell, I really, really enjoyed this spot. And I know I'll be back another time. Still kind of windy. Look at all those pine cones though. Pine cones everywhere. I actually got sick yesterday. I don't want to get too far into it, but I didn't read the directions very well of that industrial strength goof off stuff. And I got it on my skin and I inhaled it. And uh, I was puking and sitting on the toilet overnight. And uh, whew, that was unpleasant. You don't got to pay a lot, Eric. You just got to pay attention. I've uh, been talking with my neighbor, Rick, in the little micro Winnie over there. And uh, we were talking solar and everything. He's a newer RVer, but you know, I got to explain to him my, my changes throughout RV life, you know, so as to not stay at RV parks. But he was really excited to hear about you know, going to remote places and not plugging in, not, not needing to be like all the other RVs at RV parks, but just living a different life, you know? A life that was not intended to be this way, but ironically, I mean, I, I, I'll admit, I'm pretty happy where I'm at right now in life, making a living off of YouTube and being able to be self-sustaining on the road. I film during the day, I edit at night, I make a paycheck, I pay my taxes and I pay my bills. And it gets to continue to keep going. And that's a lot of fun for me, I mean, I don't like it when, when people get jealous about that or get hateful about that because, I mean, if you want this lifestyle bad enough, you will find a way to make it work just like I did. There's just, there's just no question about it. There are a lot of ways to earn money on the road. And making YouTube videos is not the only way to live in an RV and be able to see this kind of scenery all the time year round chasing good weather. So. By the way, if you are interested in getting yourself into an RV, the place I got this from in Texas, just south of Dallas, Fort Worth, and uh, Burleson, buyherepayhererv.com. If you ever get a chance to stop in there and talk with Nathan or Ben in there, tell them I sent you there. They're gonna get you in an RV. They're gonna find a way to make your dream come true, just like so many others. You could be driving around in an RV easy, okay? so. I'll put a link in the video description for their website there. You can check their inventory to see what they got. And definitely mention my name, Tell Nomadic Fanatic sent you. And uh, you, can, you can make things happen if, if you want to, if that's what you really want. For me, I'm gonna be heading out of Montana today. Gonna be getting into Idaho, gonna meet up with a friend, and then possibly even into Washington State today. Uh, I wanna go see family. I wanna go see the green. Like I said, it's, it's been a while, so. Let me pack up a little bit and get on the road, guys. It's just something magical about the Northwest. It may be all of the evergreen trees and the mountains and the fresh streams, rivers. Like just driving through here, even though this is just I-90, all of a sudden I feel so much at home. Exit 10, so we are 10 miles away from the Idaho border now. That's where we're getting to today. But man, it's good to be home finally. Just pulled off the last rest area here in Montana. Not the prettiest of scenery around here, but still, a rest area that's open. You know, we all have that place where we call home normal. Even if you're a nomad, we all started somewhere probably. Not too many people have lived their whole life in their RV on the road. So this setting, and more so like green, mossy stuff when we get to Washington State, that's what warms my heart. That's what reminds me of home so much. Yeah, you can go ahead and melt that whenever you want. You can just. Let me just get rid of that. Is this an actual working payphone? 50 cents? No dial tone. I don't think that one works. Unless you gotta put quarters in to get the dial tone. Don't see too many of those around anymore. Alright, let's get over into Idaho. I've got a friend I'm gonna meet for lunch. 
This is a really steep grade here. We're approaching Lookout Pass. I'm in, I think, third gear going 35 miles an hour up the mountains here. Woo! It's gonna kill my gas mileage, but we got a few mountain ranges to cross as we head west towards the Pacific Ocean. It's just nothing we can do about it. Does the snow surprise anybody else here in May? I don't know. I don't know if the, the, the passes, the ski passes stay open this late. I'll bet the snow is pretty bad, I would imagine. Believe it or not, we are only at 4,900 feet right now. Steep grade, next five miles. Feels like we're a lot. I mean, my ears are popping and going crazy. Still going 35 miles an hour. Miranda's got plenty of power. It's just, it likes to stay in that 2,500 to 2,800 RPM level to get us up places. Now this is the top though, I think. Yeah. This is the summit here. Okay, now five miles of downgrade. You can shift now. Perfect. Good. Bye, Montana. Just keep an eye on speed here. I may downshift if I need to. Welcome to Idaho. Idaho, Utaho, and entering Pacific time zone finally. That's right. Which means I'm going to be an hour early for lunch. I forgot about that. Okay. All right. Welcome to Idaho, guys. Here we go. have some time to kill here and that's okay because I'm in Wallace, Idaho, a place I really, really love. In fact, I have parked other RVs in this lot. They're very welcoming to travelers and RVers with the free public parking. But as we look down this street, you have to use your imagination a little bit. A movie was filmed here in this location in Wallace, Idaho. Dante's Peak. Yeah, it erupted up there. The directors and uh, writers liked this area so much, but it didn't have the mountain. So they had to just CGI it up there into the movie to make that work. But uh, yeah, Dante's Peak was filmed here. Center of the universe. There you go, center of the universe, Wallace, Idaho. Since there's nothing written about this, I actually had to ask a local what's going on with that. It's a joke. So in 2002, apparently the EPA came down on Wallace really hard and said, your mines are contaminating lead and uh, we're gonna find you. And then they did a research and they decided that, uh, well, we can't determine you're at fault, but we can't determine you're not at fault. And so the mayor, as a, as a joke said, well, you also can't determine that we're not the center of the universe. Okay, so they put that there and they're claiming center of the universe, which is, I guess, kind of funny. I'm, I'm glad the mayor had a sense of humor there. <laughs> Good point. You can't prove it is or isn't. Okay. They have a little free museum here in Wallace. There was a big fire here with, with the mines. Anybody recognize this tool right here? It's called a Pulaski. And there is Ed Pulaski, a picture of him right there, the original firefighting tool made famous here in Wallace, Idaho. That is a big safe. Wow. That's kind of a heavy door, too. And another funky safe. First National Bank. Ugh. Wow. Not going to fit much in there, because once this thing is in there, it's... Oh. Holy cow. That's a massive safe. And I still carry around my plunger for washing clothes inside the bucket, you know? Maybe I can get one of these from 1909. Yeah, just to have backups. Actually, they also have something similar to what I have, my blue-handled one. This is a much older style. It, it's been around for a while, so that technology of washing your clothes in a bucket like this, you can barely see it on here. It does say the Rapid Washer. Corp, cop, R, Loy, but no year listed. I don't know how old this is, but it's funny to see an older version of it. Check out this old bus. It kind of looks like the Guernicke's bus from uh, RV, right? 
styling and profiling. I'm not sure what they're using it for, but I love it. Oh. It's a flexible. Pretty cool. Inside up here, it looks like it was a kitchen or they're working on turning it into a kitchen or restoring it or something. It's kind of cool. I actually got the answer. This had opened as an espresso stand. And this is where you would order your uh, drink. It ran for one day and I guess they, they said they didn't make enough money so they gave up on that idea. But it has been sold and it's being remodeled to reopen this summer as once again, a bus espresso stand. So if you're coming through Wallace, actually you'll be driving on that highway and you'll see some neon bikes. That's where you turn down and you can see this bus. You can see how clear this water is down here. Crystal clear. I don't know if it's glacier fed, but I guarantee you it's snow fed. So you have to still some snow thawing up there. And uh, this water hasn't even gotten muddy yet, like the Yellowstone. It will though. It's pretty. So we're going to have lunch. There's my friends. Say hi, guys. We are here at the City Limits Pub. Going to get some grub here in Wallace. Yeah, so we're going to have lunch here at City Limits Brew Pub. Not too busy in here. I'm starting off with a little mini flight here of uh, Mountain Top Amber, Baldy Blonde, and Loft Honey. Some local crafts here from Idaho, I think, right? At least local, so somewhere nearby at least. Hanging out with Mary and Steve. Say hi, guys. Hi. Hello. And what'd you pick out there? I got a Pulaski Porter. Ah, this one's my favorite. How is it? Great. Chocolate and espresso. Yum. And we ordered food. That's on the way. Guess what I ordered? You'll never guess. Well, what'd you get, Steve? I got the chicken marsala fettuccine. Yum. Mary? I got the turkey sandwich with stuffing. Oh, okay. I went with the uh, plain Jane burger with bacon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to eat, and then I'll get back to you when we get outside. What a scrumptious burger in there. You know what? That is actually my first Idaho burger ever. I don't think I've ever had a burger before. I love their potatoes. And they have uh, outdoor seating here that actually says no food or service outside because it's still off season. It's not July or August, but you can sit next to the creek here. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I'm gonna hang out with my friends for the day. We're gonna walk around downtown Wallace. They've got some ties here. And uh, I can't boondock here, but before it gets dark, I will be able to take the RV back on the road. And uh, just kind of experience Idaho a little bit today with some friendly faces. So that's my plan. I'll get back to you guys when I get back into the RV tonight. Say what? What? Is that how you really feel? Oh my goodness. How do you really feel, Jax? All right, man, you tired? I got the heater on. I got the heater on, Mr. KK. And yes, I did get a magnet center of the universe will make no sense to anybody and not have any ties to Wallace, Idaho, except it'll be our little inside joke because we will understand why Wallace, Idaho is the center of the universe. So yeah, I like that. Looking good. Man, we had a great day hanging out with friends here in Idaho. It's just a small little patch of Idaho on the north side of I-90, so don't be surprised if tomorrow I get back home to Washington State. We shall see. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, gonna hang out a little bit farther here before heading on home towards Olympia, I guess. And uh... Oh, oh, is it? You're right, it is almost empty. I can see the bottom of the bowl. Better tend to that. See you in a couple days, guys, bye-bye.